Hey guys, Lauren Oliver here, and I'm coming to you um, in a special tour edition of my Ask Weekly video series, Ask Lauren Oliver. Um, so I wanted to give you a taste of tour life. This is me in the back of a car heading to the airport in the scenic, uh, through scenic Queens. Don't you feel like you're right on tour with me? And of course, I am touring for Panic. If you haven't gone out and read it already, if you haven't gotten it, you must. It's awesome. It's keeping people up really late, and I am now the number one scientific source of sleep deprivation in the United States. Okay, I just made that up, but it sounds really good, and hopefully you'll love panic, so get it. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to ask some, answer some questions. Um, I have to give a special shout out to Trisha, who harassed me in uh, LA this weekend for missing last week's Ask Lauren Oliver. Sorry guys, I've been on tour, um, but I'm definitely not going to miss this week. So I have two questions this week that come from um, Tumblr, Memoirs of Amanda and Amanda Deliria Nervosa. I'm suspecting these may be the same Amandas because both questions are about character development. So in terms of generating strong characters, it's important that all of your characters have defined wants and needs from the start of the book. And the wants and the needs don't actually have to be the same. Often they're different. For example, somebody might want popularity, but what they really need is, you know, to realize that popularity doesn't define your self-worth. Um, but giving broad wants and needs, figuring out what that person wants more than anything will make them very strong, powerful characters in your head and should render them kind of more consistent. It will inform how they then behave for the rest of the book because um, the wants should drive most of the action. Um, of course, people aren't entirely consistent, so it's okay if, for example, your character wants something but then doubts that they can have it. Um, those things are true of normal people in real life. We're all a little bit contradictory. Um, but, but definitely defining those things for yourself will help. Um, in terms of what people look like, I got the great, great writing advice from somebody, from an old um, writing professor. Actually, I think it was E.L. Doctor who wrote Ragtime and is very famous. He said that basically people are interested not in what characters look like, but in their, they're interested in descriptions of characters that give us a sense of characters' moral char qualities. Um, so, for example, you could tell, you could write in a book that somebody was 5'9 and had black hair and, you know, tell us her cup size and shoe size and everything else, and that really wouldn't tell you anything significant about the character. But if you say something like, she had the kind of smile, or she liked to smile when other people embarrass themselves, all of a sudden, it's a visual picture, but it tells us what that character is really like inside. So you should strive to have... Um, descriptions that really tell us what the person's moral qualities are like. For example, in the case of Hannah and Lena, it actually wasn't that important that Hannah is blonde and tall. She could equally have been dark-haired and short, except that I wanted to highlight the fact that Lena feels insecure around her, and Lena has dark hair and is shorter and feels like an every girl. Those are qualities that I feel like and every girl kind of has. She's a little bit prone to curves. She's shorter than other people. She has just plain brown hair. Um, and she feels like her friend, her best friend, is this blonde bombshell. So it really relates not actually to what Hannah looks like, but more to what Lena feels about Hannah and then feels as a result about herself. I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, you can just ask me about it next week. And the last question comes from, this is an easy one, Kate Blue 116 from YouTube asks, do you also like watching fashion red carpet shows like those before the Oscars? So I'm kind of the worst in terms of the fact that the only thing that interests me about award shows is what people wore and how they did their hair specifically. I'm a big one for getting hair envy, um, mostly because, you know, my hair looks like this. Um, so yes, I do like them. Although I actually even like it more when there's just pictures afterwards online because then I can kind of like look at my leisure. Yeah, hopefully someday when one of my movies gets made, I'll be participating in the red carpet pre-Oscar show or something, maybe. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are having a great week. I'm going to Boston to chill with the lovely Cami Garcia um, tonight and then back to do an event tomorrow with McNally Jackson in my hometown. New York City, so hope to see some of you there. And um, then I'm headed to Malaysia. Don't worry, Trisha. I'll make sure to get an Ask Lauren Oliver out next week, right on time. Um, hope you guys have a great week, and talk to you soon. Bye.